Jasmine, uh, she will speak on a variation of that theme. Welcome. Good afternoon, Doc. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as we are talking about here, uh, the Belt and Road, uh, one of the strategies. Uh, <laughs> one of the strategies is connection between people and people. Uh, so finally, the Belt and Road Initiative has to be worked out among people. Uh, but cross culture working is not easy. Uh, first, introduce myself. Uh, I am actually a teacher, marketing teacher from Shanghai Dianji University. Seven years ago, I came to Hamstad University for the Professor McDanovich to uh, start my PhD study. So now I'm at the seventh of my year, hopefully, defend this September. Um, through all the seven years, study and working between China and Sweden, and as a, as a marketing teacher background, now uh, my dissertation is about business model innovation. So I naturally observe a lot of the environment, business environment, the people's way of doing business, the people's way of thinking in Sweden and in China. Um, seven years ago, when Mike persuaded me to come to Sweden, to have a PhD study. What I know about Sweden is Stockholm, Gothenburg, and the national flag. Now I believe I know much more about the Swedish culture. Um, and today here, I would like to share some of my understanding of the Chinese way of doing business and hope I can contribute uh, for the Swedish understanding of the Chinese way. So uh, I don't have uh, quotations and data, it's, I would like to illustrate what I want to emphasize by two cases, and at last some small taboos, some of the gifts you don't want to give to Chinese, <laughs> then you can take the ideas with you. So China is very different, uh, check the, the distance from China, uh, Beijing to Stockholm is 6,700 kilometers, six hours uh, time difference, and cross-culture Doing business is never easy, especially doing business with Chinese. Chinese are so complex. Chinese society is so complex. And to understand Chinese is also not easy. But uh, it's not, there's no solution. Actually, many times the misunderstanding is coming from a lack of cultural knowledge. Now I can say I understand the Swedish way much more because I have been here, experience, learn, vice versa. If you put some time to understand the Chinese way, you will also come to understand, okay, okay, that's why, that's how they think. So the first case I would like to illustrate is uh, H&M. H&M dresses on sale. So I and Mike uh, worked uh, almost one year for the Goldwood Business Model Innovation Project in Beijing uh, in 2015. So it was weekend, we were doing some shopping. Then we came to see uh, these beautiful summer beach dresses uh, at the city center of Beijing, HM, uh, fleet, fleet shop, big sale. And almost, you see, it's not one or two left, it's almost all of them are left. So, can you make a guess why they are left? Why they don't sell? Why so many left? Isn't it they are beautiful? Are they beautiful? Yes, they are beautiful. They are sexy, right? Then why on the Chinese market so much are left? Then we need to understand the reason behind. So, we have different way of behaving on the beach. I know Swedes love summer, right? So for summertime, you go to beach, you like sunbathing. Because sunbathing make you sexy, make you look healthy, right? However, guess how Chinese ladies behave on the beach? This is how we be behave under the sun and on the beach. And you can see this lady, well pr protected, right? Why? Why Chinese ladies don't like sunshine? If you go to the Chinese beach, I know here we have a lot of Chinese friends. If I'm wrong, you can correct me. <laughs> so, so why Chinese lady don't like sunshine? That is because we have different definition of beauty. To the Western way, beauty means, tank means beautiful, sexy. However, we Chinese want to look white, right? 
if a, we, we have a saying, if a lady is, the skin is white, then that, that can compensate her three shortcomings. <laughs> so it's that important. And our definition of beauty also, we like gentle, young, and sweet. This is a picture I found from the internet. Actually, it is an annual party, annual, a new year party of the lawyer house. You can see they are definitely middle class ladies. That is how they dress for the important formal occasions. You, you can see that no lady is dressing in a very low cut dress, right? Because uh, in the Chinese context, beauty does not mean we want to look sexy. It's not part of our definition of beauty. We want to look gentle, sweet, and young. However, the teenagers here, when they are 13, they already rush to want to look very mature and sexy, right? So we have different definitions of sexy. That's why we have different preferences of product. Dream time. Can sell very well in Sweden, but cannot sell in China. Uh, maybe now some Chinese coming back from Western start to move to this, to this direction, but they are definitely minority yet. So in China, we want some block. Pay attention, block, not sun protecting. Block means I don't get covered. So sun block 50 plus, plus, plus. <laughs> and the slogan, the, the commercial slogan is whitening, brightening each week. That will be disaster to the ladies here, right? Whitening each week. Lightman. And also you can see the beach dress. This is a, a beach clothes Chinese young families would like to pick. The whole family dress the same pattern and they think it's cute. So now we can maybe answer the question better because we have different lifestyle, different perception of what is beautiful. We have different behavior in our life. Then we have different uh, preference of choices. So after all, we need to understand the nature of the custom. So what I want to say from the first case is, first of all, we need to understand what Chinese customers value. What, what do they value, right? What do they value? Actually, it's vice versa. Suppose if Chin uh, Chinese products want to sell in the Swedish market, they also need to understand what Swedes value. Here I have some other illustrations. If Chinese friends bring you to this kind of dinner setting, that is Chinese uh, side, host want to show our hospitality because it's splendid, right? It's splendid. We want to show respect to the most um, respectful VIP guest. However, we, uh, in the Western context, you might uh, appreciate more of this kind of cozy dinner setting. And this is also a way uh, to illustrate the difference exists in the Chinese uh, in the kitchen among kitchen. One of my colleagues here, uh, she told me her father-in-law gave her three different kind of tools to peel a potato. <laughs> three different tools to peel a potato. However, we Chinese basically use one knife to everything. <laughs> this is how we stir egg, right? So this. It's not only way of cooking. This is showing the difference of mindset. From this shows that Westerns are moving to a direction that specialized, highly developed, different um, specialized tools and technology for specific purpose. However, Chinese tend to maybe use more uh, utensil that with multifunction. So here actually we can see mindset difference from the kitchen. And also Chinese always like to drink warm water because our, our mothers always tell us from, from when, I, when we were young, and you drink ice water. <laughs> this is the first illustration. The second one um, is about blue air. Actually, Swedish products have high prestigious among Chinese consumers' heart. Uh, it is being perceived as high pr prestigious and very good quality. And the first year when I came to Sweden, one of my friends even asked me, is it possible you bring a blue air, air purifier for me from Sweden? <laughs> I said, okay, it's very heavy. So blue air, air purifi purifier is very popular in China. Um, however, this is my neighborhood. Um, I live in Shanghai, the terminal station 
not far away from the terminal station of the subway 91. That means it's at the edge of the city. So it's the edge of the suburb, near suburb to a uh, far away suburb. So I often go to this community. So it's a community shopping center located at the edge of the near suburb. Then at the underground floor in the corridor, in the corridor in the middle, I see somebody is selling blue air, air purifier there. So I looked and I think, mm hmm, this is interesting. Then I took a picture because according to my marketing <laughs> teacher back background, I feel blue air purifier, air purifier show up at wrong place. Why do I say so? Please remember this setting. Community shopping center underground in the corridor, in the middle. Why do I say it show up in the wrong place? Then let's look at Alibaba and Taobao. I hope you have heard those names, Alibaba and Taobao. Yeah, the leading Chinese online uh, C2C and B2C uh, shopping platform. On the first page of the official website of Tianmao, that is focusing on uh, Tianmao Guoji, that means Tianmao Global means Tian, uh, international products platform, uh, Alibaba provided for international products. And on the first page, you can see here, they list especially authenticity guarantee. And then if you click here, then you will see uh, further information, tracing source of the product. So they show all the way, this milk powder, let's say from Denmark, all the way, how it was transported, the logistic information, etc., to, to, to show this is real a uh, can of milk powder from Denmark, storage place all the way come to China. And another illustration, Dai Go. All our Chinese friends know Dai Go. Dai Go means uh, some people live overseas, uh, they buy the product you want, uh, and then mail this product to China. Do I make it understandable? Shopping authentic international product on behalf of you. Suppose there's Chinese uh, customer, they want to buy the milk powder from Denmark, and I live in, in Sweden. And I say, okay, I can buy this milk powder for you, and I mail it to you. So this is called Dai Go. And this is a um, lady that um, do this business on Taobao. And this is how much he sh she should uh, share the information to prove the milk powder she bought, she buy and sent to you is really from the Danish supermarket. So they even have live stream on video to you, to show to you, now I'm uh, at the supermarket, and now I'm buying this, and now I'm putting it uh, to sell, uh, to, to mail from the uh, post office. Why do they do so? And BBC commenting on this says, uh, the Daigo business among Chinese is substantially a trust issue, because they have to feel, you are really ma mailing me the real authentic product and proof certificate is everywhere in Chinese life. 2001, when I was married, I need my university to issue a certificate to prove that I'm single. So why do we need so much proof in Chinese life? Trust is the key word, trust. Then we need to go back to the Chinese history. Traditionally, China is a large country, we know that, 9.6 million square kilometers with big population. And from the ancient time, we are agriculture-based civilization. That means in the ancient time, we are self-sufficient. We don't need to rely on too much of this kind of trade and merchant. And emperors perceive agriculture as the foundation of the country. That is why in the ancient time, emperors looked down. They looked down on uh, merchants and commerce. So in the ancient time, 
we have not developed very uh, sophisticated this kind of commercial laws to uh, protect the two sides that coming together to do business. And also, as we know, China has big population, right? If one guy fool one person at one city once, then he travel to another city, basically can fool one person in each city the whole life, right? So this shaped um, the default value in the, uh, our culture, that is, we don't trust strangers. I think this is, uh, th there is no right or wrong. This is the consequence shaped by the history, the con uh, uh, condition itself. So, I don't trust you until I get enough signals and information that make me feel that I can trust you. That is why, when we come together, we <coughs> like to interact with each other a lot. Sometimes it's business dinner, sometimes can, we can go to sing karaoke together, sometimes also we can even play basketball together at weekends. And I know that Swedes don't do this. Chinese uh, work and life many times are merged, and many times our colleagues can become close friends. This is a big cultural difference that suffers me a lot here, because colleagues say goodbye to you after five. So, Actually, if you are doing business with Chinese, they might invite you to socialize, and then you will feel confused. My God, what are you doing? Saturday, family time. He has no right to invite me to play ba basketball with him, right? <laughs> yeah, but actually, this is our Chinese way from this kind of social activity to get to know you, to feel. So that's why uh, this is Professor Mike, when we're doing the project at Goldman, uh, we participate a lot of these kind of dinners, and finally, we even become half friend of our uh, partner, the vice president at that time of Goldman. So Chinese can be a long-term relation among our partners. And this is an annual party uh, of one subsidiary company of Goldman uh, organized. Uh, it is a logistic uh, department that in charge of the whole Goldman group. And they're having annual party. They are inviting all the strategic uh, suppliers of them coming together and they give award to the excellent partner of that year. They sing together, they dance together. And you don't see that in, in the Swedish culture. This is a very different way. And last year, I and Mike participated another seminar in Stockholm uh, last October. It was uh, small and middle-sized entrepreneurs who are interested to do business in China. Here, I quote some of them. You can see the pictures. These are two entrepreneurs. The gentleman has uh, done business in China for 16 years somehow. The lady just started her business um, one app to support uh, pregnant lady. So this is their quotations. In general, it took three years and millions to learn the lesson. It does not work if you just show up. You must have someone who has good contact in the field to introduce you. Prepare to pay entertainment fee. Now maybe you can understand why, right? Because that is the Chinese way to get to know each other and to feel, can we become friends? Can we do business? And also, super fast speed. Now I'm quoting them. Super fast speed in, on the Chinese market. So, the Western context, we start with business. To be, business is business. To companies, a company is good business. Then you can just do the business according to the procedure because the systems are there. You don't have to know each other personally and be friends to do the business. Um, however, in China, it's the opposite. First, we have social interaction activities. You build personal relation and trust among these two individuals that is now discussing. And then, finally, two companies can achieve good business deal. If you don't get trust, you can't open the door. If you can't open the door, you don't get business. So, 
Now we come to come back to the second case. Why I say Blue Air Show up wrong place? Because that was a community shopping center underground in the middle of the corridor. That means it's ever Blue Air. Air purifier is a high class product among Chinese heart. And the high class product show at a low low status place, they don't match. And then Chinese customers will start to suspect, are you real? Are you genuine from Sweden? So that is why um, when this kind of mismatching happens, that will influence uh, the business. But behind this mismatching actually is a trust issue. Chinese customers are, uh, consumers are always very precautious to see whether this is a real good quality or not. So first of all, you need to build trust in your target customer's heart. Then, how can we get trust? Um, like activity today, right? Come to know the Chinese. As long as they have met you, they, they know your organization, and later it's much easier. And also, many times, with government endorsement, if suppose it is the uh, region Holland and uh, Chinese Hebei province, they organize this kind of business ne negotiation, promotion activity, you show up there and everything will be much easier because now you have government endorsement and that shows you are a genuine organization that is serious about doing business. And any contacts can work. Family member, former schoolmates, uh, workmates, uh, you come from the same city, same village, same, same region, everything can work. That is why among Chinese, when we meet each other, the first thing we will ask is, where do you come from? Right? Oh, you are also from Sichuan province. I'm from Sichuan province. They will say, oh, we, have, we come from the same, same province. So everything can uh, shorten the distance that is helpful. And finally, it is about build a mutual relationship of trust and friendship. Um, Chinese, in general, uh, we, I would say we have a closer and warmer uh, perspective of relation at workplace. We make friends among or at workplace. It's long-term and future-oriented. Respect, keep your promise, keep uh, promise, uh, 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 yeah, keep contact. Show your caring, especially when uh, the other side need help. And we Chinese say Xue Zhong Song Tan, that means when the friend is cold because it's snowing outside and you show your share, share, show your caring, sorry, then you get their heart immediately. And this war can last five years, ten years. <coughs> Chinese are quite emotional inside actually. So what the small things we can start with, Chinese are the same as sweets, we are shy. We are shy in daily life, but after some drinks we open up. This is the same. <laughs> so bring some schnapps uh, to meet your Chinese friend at business dinner. That will help. And also, uh, this is a municipality lady from uh, Hamstad municipality city. Uh, we went to Shanghai. Uh, then when ladies, uh, gentlemen, Michael did sing the Swedish song, that shortened the distance immediately. <laughs> so my conclusion. We are very different, but as long as we have the willing to get to know each other, to understand each other, and to prepare ourselves what we are going to face and uh, why they behave that way, and get an understanding, then you will find it's not that difficult. As now, I can understand much more of the Swedish context. Of course, I'm still learning. Okay, last, some taboos. <laughs> some gifts Chinese don't want to get from partners. Hats of green color, never give to Chinese gentlemen because <laughs> in the Chinese context, it means your wife is cheating on you. <laughs> so don't give green color of hat as gift to Chinese uh, man. Lady is okay. Scissors uh, has a symbolic meaning of cutting off the friendship somehow, so we don't appreciate it. And uh, clock and number four we don't like because the pronunciation is related to death. So please avoid clock. Uh, also avoid number four. 
Uh, and also chrysisma, uh, this flower, uh, is for funeral in China and also in Japan, I believe. So avoid those gifts, then you don't make them feel. <laughs> Thank you.